Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. This is another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. We know all honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in online. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to, uh, let's do, you know what I'm saying, take old school, Isaiah chapter 28. We did Isaiah chapter 29 last week. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and take old school. Back to where we started, kind of. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Is Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Watch what the book say. Uh, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? Oh, well, yeah, that's the question. Is it going to be the people that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? The babies, in other words. Is it going to be the babies that he teach the knowledge and make to understand the teaching? All right, keep going. For a precept must be upon precept. He said, because precept has to be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. That's uh -huh. a commandment, right? Commandment has to be put on top of commandment. This commandment here. Where? What else? Line upon line. Line, line upon, upon line. line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. You got to take a little bit from here. You got to take a little bit from there. So he said, who going to understand this book? Right? To understand this book, you got to be able to put this commandment on top of that commandment. Put this line on top of this line. Take a little bit from here. Take a little bit from there. And put it all together and make something out of it. All right? Keep going. That's all right. Go play. You heard what she said. Go. 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 To whom? Wait. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. See, this is the key right here. He said, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Right? That's the part of it that we have to understand when we're coming into the book, when we're trying to learn the Bible. We have to understand that he's letting us know, he's starting us off by saying, with stammering lips and another tongue, I'm going to speak to you. In other words, I'm going to speak to you in a way that you don't understand. I'm going to speak to you as if I have a stutter. Somebody come up to you stuttering. Somebody come up to you speaking another language, right? When you say another tongue, that's another language, right? Somebody come up to you speaking to you in a way you don't understand. You're going to look at them and be like, oh, I'm sorry, no, you know what I'm saying? No habla espanol. You know what I mean? And then you kind of look at it and you walk away from the situation. That's exactly what people do from the book, right? Because he's purposely speaking to us in a way we don't understand. So it causes some people to walk away. He's looking for the person that fight through, to seek to get understanding, to learn the other language, to learn how to figure out somebody, even though they stutter and talking to you, that you you able to understand exactly what they're saying. All right, keep going. To whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, mm -hmm. and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, uh -huh. precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For what reason? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. The whole purpose of this, the whole reason why it's precept upon precept and it's like a puzzle for us, the whole reason why he's speaking to us in a different language that we won't understand, the whole reason is that it might come to us and we don't hear it. And it ends up being a trap for us. The whole thing is set up for a trap. Y'all been taught about a God. Y'all been taught about a whole lot of things. Let me teach y'all about the real God. All right? Let's open up the book and let's, let's understand what the real God, the most high God, the one that wrote through us through the Bible. Let's see what he is made of. Not this fairy tale God. 
All right? Not this one that God, look, God love everybody God. All right? That one ain't going to get you nowhere. Let's learn about the real God. The real God set everybody up. He put a trap for everybody to fall into. And he said, you know what? The ones I'm going to save out of this trap is going to be the ones that fight through it. It's going to be the ones that press forward, that continuously seek my name. That's what we're here to do. All right? That's what we're here to do. Last week, we left off Deuteronomy chapter 12. Let's pick it up. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, give me about verse uh, 14. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, give me verse 13. Maybe verse 12. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 12. Now you kind of got to, you know what I'm saying, just kind of figure out where you was, you know what I'm saying. It's better, to, it's better to go further back, you know what I'm saying, than, you know what I'm saying, I'd rather read more than less. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 12. Let's see what he's talking about. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee uh -huh. but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, uh -huh. and to serve the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul, mm -hmm. to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day? Mm -hmm. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's, mm -hmm. thy God. The earth also, with all that is that, uh, with all that therein is. Mm -hmm. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Yeah. Circumcise therefore. The he said, do what now? Circumcise therefore. The he said, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. All right? He asked us to circumcise therefore the foreskin of our heart. All right? That's last week we read that, and then we went to, um, we went to Romans chapter 3. Let's go back. It's Romans chapter 3. Give me a, uh, give me a, uh, give me Romans chapter 3. Let's read it, verse uh, 19. He says, circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. Remember, our law taught us about the circumcision. It was given to Abraham. Anybody that was amongst us, anybody that was, that was of God through our people had to be circumcised. Right? Abraham, it would get, that was given to Abraham and it was passed down in our law. But now he came back. When you get circumcised, he's talking about the foreskin, the foreskin of, of, of your genitals. You know what I'm saying? Then we come back, he said, now circumcise the foreskin of your heart. So that meant, the, the circumcision itself meant something. It meant like a mark. It's a mark that, it's kind of like how we look at it as uh, being saved. You know, you accepting Jesus Christ. That's what the circumcision, that's akin to what the circumcision represented. Right? You had, a, you had the circumcision of your flesh. Then that, that kind of represented, okay, you you one of us, right? You one of the ones that God chose, right? You, of, you are of the chosen people. Even if you are a different people genetically, you know what I'm saying? You get circumcised, you just like, okay, we accept you. You know what I'm saying? You're one of the chosen people. So now when he say circumcise your heart, that, that's telling us something deeper. He's like, you know what I'm saying? You chosen, like, not because of your flesh, but the deeper thing, right? We're going to read in Romans. Let's see if this thought is echoed. It's Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 19. Now, we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law, uh -huh. that every mouth may be stopped, and uh -huh. all the world may be become guilty before God. Uh -huh. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Uh -huh. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Yahshua the Messiah, unto all and upon all them that believe. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, mm -hmm. being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in the Messiah, Yahushua, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. All right, that's important for us to know. Everybody has sinned. Everybody. All right? Even our king Solomon told us that. All right? When Solomon made a prayer... He said when they sin, and he put he he made a point here like because there are none that sin not. Right? He made a point here like it ain't nobody that's gonna get out of here without sinning now. You know what I'm saying? He said when they sin, you know what I'm saying, hear their prayer. Because there's none that don't sin now. Don't know no, no that we ain't we ain't crazy in the thing and nobody sin. People look at the what happens if people look at the New Testament, they think that's a new thing. It's a new revelation that people always sin. We always knew that. Goodness gracious, somebody say a prayer. 
You know what I'm saying? We always knew that thing wrote. You know what I'm saying? We look at it, and like we know that. we It was always in our book that a, that a man is going to sin. Tight like tight or tight like tight? No, like it's tight. Like, like your face is scratching. Yeah. She's about to get on the mic and see roll out. <laughs> Let me see your rap move. Now, but um, you look at it, and we always knew that sin was something that, that was prevalent in our people. What happens is because we don't know our history, because we never looked into the book, we hear it in the New Testament, and we feel like something special happened, right? Something new happened, right? The New Testament. See, God said all oh, man is sin, right? Matter of fact, I almost just read right past because that, you know, that thing ain't even, it's like, yeah, uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? That thing ain't even like no highlight. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, it's a highlight for people who don't know the book, right? You don't know the book. It's like, that's a highlight. Whoa, none. Everybody sinned? Right? That thing, a highlight. That ain't no highlight for us. We know that. We've been been told that. Solomon already told us that a long time ago. Right? And it is not to be confused with repentance. That's not to be confused with repentance. That's a good point. Right? Matter of fact, that's what's being discussed right now. A lot of people don't see it. That's what's being discussed. He's telling you. This is the order. Everybody sinned. Everybody put under the law. Everybody made guilty for one reason. Read that. Read that verse. What verse? What verse is everybody sin? All have sinned. Uh, for all have sinned. What verse is that? Short. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. It's verse twenty-three. This is Romans chapter three, verse twenty-three. Watch what he said. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh huh. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in the Messiah Yahushua. This is what is, this is repentance that he's talking about. He said being justified freely through his redemption, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. The remission of sins that are what? Past. Notice he didn't say remission of sins that's, that's in the past, that's in the present, and that's going to happen that we don't even know about. You say, look, you go to these Christian churches, they end off their whole sermon by saying that, saying that type of prayer. God, forgive us for the sins that, in, that are in our past, the, the sins in our present, and the sins that we don't even know happened yet. That's not book. That's not what the man, we read not a New Testament, that's not what the man just told you. The man said, remission the what? Of sins that are past. You don't see no commas there. He ain't making no other deals. There's no side deals dealing with God. You got to come in by the door. Every time these sneaky, lad, nasty pastors get the line of y'all telling you some other way, that's a side deal. You coming up the side. And he already told you, if you come up the side, you're a darn thief. Why do I have to pretend like the Bible don't say what it say just for the sake of somebody feelings not being hurt? I tell you back to their face if they don't teach it. You got to teach the book. The book say pass. I'm not putting nothing there. You know what they're going to tell her? Y'all putting stuff in the Bible. Y'all taking it out of context. You adding stuff in. I'm adding it. Keep going. Watch this. Sins that are past. I just want to make sure he don't slide no future in there somewhere. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past uh -huh. through the forbearance of God. Uh -huh. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Yahushua. Uh -huh. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No. Mm -hmm. But by the law of faith. Uh -huh. Therefore, we conclude that a man is just about justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Uh-huh. Is he the God of the Jews only? No. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Uh-huh. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Okay. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Uh-huh. Do we then make void the law through faith? Uh-huh. God forbid. He said, God forbid. Right? Keep going. Yes, we establish the law. We establish it. What else? What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? Uh huh. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, uh -huh. but not before God. Uh huh. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Right? 
Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But so if you works, work, not, so if you work, he talking about the he talking about the he talking about the law. He said if you work, then it's reckoned unto you as debt. Right? Now this is Romans chapter three. Four. Romans chapter four now. Uh, to Romans chapter 4 about verse 3? Verse 4. This is Romans chapter 4 about verse 4. All right? He said, if it's grace, it's credited to you. Right? It's credited to you. Right? But if it works, then it's owed to you. It's different. Right? If it's grace, it's credited to you. That means you owe. Right? A lot of people don't even understand what's going on here. He's trying to tell you, if it's grace, it's credited to you. That means you owe. Right? If it works, that means something is owed to you. Why doesn't that idea work? Because we don't owe, God don't owe us nothing. God don't owe us a darn thing. That thing can never work. It can never work. It can never, that means your whole plan is messed up. If you think that you can get out there and do something, and then God owes you something. He said, if it's, if it works, that thing going to, read it again. A lot of people don't know what they're reading here. A lot of people, you know what a lot of people going to look at that. They're going to say, see? It ain't about what you do. That, that's what they talk. That, that's what they think this is about. It ain't about what you do. It's just about God loving you. God just loved you so much, he just gave it to you. All you got to do is accept what he already gave you. That's what they think is right. Watch this. We just shoot a hole all through all these misty people that taught us and confused our minds with. It's so hard for us to understand the Bible now because these people that taught us, oh, we're just going to teach. My, all, all, we gonna do, all you got to do is sit and listen. We're just going to do some teaching. Right, you all you gotta do is listen to the book, look at the book, and that thing will open up to you. We've been clouded, our mind been clouded with so many different things, left and right, left and right. We look at the words, and it's plainly saying we can look at the words, say remission of sins that are past, and guess what we get out of that? Past, present, future. Don't matter what you do, you can keep sinning all your whole life, and as long as you feel bad about it, and you really, really love God, and you believe that He died on the cross for your sins, you'll still make it in. Now you set up, you set up half of the population of the world for failure saying that to them. And nobody bats an eye. That thing don't bother nobody in this world. It bothered me. All right, you know what? Grab Ezekiel. Before we go there, grab Ezekiel chapter 9 for me. You can start at about verse 1. Let me show you how much it battled me. Let's just teach. Let's just teach. Say what? Yeah, if, if 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 it's grace, I didn't say that. Paul, Paul said before you grab before you uh, grab Ezekiel nine, just rewrite what, what Paul said just now. This is uh, this is uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Romans chapter not four, verse that, four. Now to him that work is, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Right? If you work, then the reward is not reckoned. Go started uh started verse three. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So. On, on, on the, the, according to the scripture with Abraham, he believed God and righteousness was credited to him. Right? It's like having a credit card. God gave, gave Abraham a righteous credit card. So if, if Abraham goes swipe that righteous credit card, he get his purchase. But who does Abraham owe at that point? So as soon as you use, as soon as you use that credit card, you owe the, you owe the creditor. Period. Right? So he said it was counted unto him as righteousness. But watch what he said in the next verse. So that's credit. We learned about credit. Let's hear about something else. Now to him that work is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Right? But if you work, that's different. That's not you owing God. That's God owing you. Right? Let's put it in realistic terms. I go to work. I clock in. I work an eight-hour shift. I clock out. I come back, clock in, eight hours shift, clock out, clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. Two weeks go by. What do I expect on my paycheck? What you work. I, I want my 80 hours. I work for two darn weeks. You bet it. What do they owe me? If you work, they owe you. So now we got to put it in our mind and say, okay, I'm doing the law. I kept the law from start to finish. Does that mean God owe me? If you think God owe you a thing, you got the whole thing back messed up. Yeah. It's all backwards. Yeah, he ain't owe us because 
because we ain't get through it like y'all should have If he don't owe us, then what do we owe? We owe him. That's how these people get you messed up. They don't mention that part. You know what they tell you? See, God just gave you. It don't say he gave it to you. He said it's accounted to you. If it's accounted to you, that means you owe the man. If he give you righteousness up front, guess what you got to give him in the back end? Righteousness. Stop letting these people lie to you. He just explained the whole thing for you. If he counted to Abraham as righteousness, then that's great. But now if you work, that's debt. You trying to say God is in debt to you. That's a lie. You going right to darn hell. You sitting here keeping the law and you think God is in debt. You, you going right to darn hell. God. You do anything. You think God is in debt to you. He owe you something. God you going right to darn hell. God owed Yahushua life. The yeah. only man that he darn owed is Yahushua. And why do he owe? Because he kept the law exactly how it was supposed to be kept. What I want? Huh? I want Ezekiel, but before we go to Ezekiel, give me, give me Leviticus, I think, 18. Oh. Leviticus 18, verse 1. Uh, I know what you're getting at. Hold what we got right there. We coming back to Romans 2. We just got to do a little bit of talking. These people been lying to us for so darn long. I want Leviticus 18, verse 1. Then I want Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. Then we're going to come back to Romans chapter 4. Give me verse 4. Is Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Ezekiel 9, verse 1. Then Romans 4, verse 4. I'm going to line this whole thing up. He will play a God about this darn book. His whole book together. Every, every little stop you take. You know what's good about his book? You keep reading it to straighten your butt out. All you got to do is keep reading. Only time you're going to make a mess is if you stop reading. You keep reading this book and straighten your butt out. As long as you take it for what it says, don't play with it. A lot of people just read right over words and just be like, oh, well, you know, that don't agree with what I thought, so I'm just going to keep going. Nah, you got to read them things. That thing hits you. You got to let that thing hit you. You got to let the book hit you. A lot of people dodging the book. You know what I'm saying? Don't let that, let that thing hit you. That thing hurt, too. Let it break your butt down. But you'll get it. You'll understand that thing will feel good. The world ain't confusing to you no more. Go ahead and give me uh, this is Leviticus chapter uh, 18, verse 1. I think that's what I want. And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, uh -huh. I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, shall ye not do. Don't now, let these, these lying hotel people... You know, these lying Kemet people tell you they got it from they got it from Egypt. Book just told you after the stuff you saw in Egypt, don't do it. They spent all their time in Egypt, all they law. They got some lying. Why would our law tell us not to do what we got it from? <laughs> just stupid. Just stupid people. Keep going. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Uh huh. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, shall ye not do. Yeah, I don't do nothing like none of these people. We was a set apart people. Keep going. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Uh huh. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. Where if a man do it, what? He'll live by it. If a man do it, he'll what? That ain't what it say here. Say it. I am the Lord your God. Uh huh. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judges, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Period. You said if you do his judgments, you will live in them. There's only one man who did the judgments. That's Yahushua. That's why he owed him. Yahushua did work. The Most High God in debt. He had to give it to him. How you, why, you think, why in the world do you think when the man died, he just told you, if you do the judgment, you'll live by it. Did Yahushua do the judgment? Absolutely. Did Yahushua sin? No. Nope. So the wages of sin is what? Death. So if you sin, that means you owe death. Right? That's a work. Sin is a work. So now God is in debt to you. You know what I owe you? Death. Debt. I got to give your butt debt. If you sin, that's what you're going to get. That's why the books say, because we sin, every one of us. Book we just read it. It say everybody sin. Everybody has fallen short. Now everybody sin. So guess guess what happens to every single human being? They gotta die. So now Yahushua, who did not sin, never sinned, right? He kept the judgments. 
Guess what happened to him? The man died. And guess what happened? Three days later, the man owed him life. That wasn't supposed to happen to you. You kept the darn judgments. How I'm going to kill you? My promise was if you do them, you will live. I cannot lie. Get your butt up. You just took their darn penalty. They are the sinners. You died. You never sinned. Get your darn butt up. That wasn't for you. That's the only way this thing works. That's how perfect he is. That's the only way it works. Anybody else, if they call themselves dying for your sin, you know what's going to happen? You stay your butt in the ground because you sin too. Y'all sure it works because I can die for your sin and I know God got to get me up. Because I didn't sin. These people, you know, what's, you know what's wrong with this? These people can never teach that if they keep lying about all this sin stuff. It, it will never make sense. They'll never see that as long as they keep blocking their mind to the sin stuff. All you got to do is be honest about sin. You got to stop sinning if you want to make it in. I don't care how you look at it. You have to stop sinning if you want to make it in. You have to repent from all sin, not just a few, not just the ones that's difficult for them. You got to start from the rooter to the darn tutor, repent from all of them, and then make it in. It don't bother these people that they lie. They sit here and lie. They don't, they don't even bat eyes. They just lie to these people all darn day. They don't have them feeling good in church, jumping around, boom, boom, boom. That stuff don't bother them. That, that stuff got to bother This is Ezekiel 9. That stuff got to bother us. That stuff got to bother us. It don't bother, it don't bother you. That, oh, goodness gracious. I know it's coming. You know what I mean? I know it. Cause I read this book. I see all this stuff happening. I know this thing is coming. That thing pains me. Just letting these people just sit here and lie. And lie. And lie. And play the hypocrite. And lie. And misunderstand stuff. And don't get me wrong. A lot of them probably ain't even purposely lying. They don't even know they lying. Right? They probably think they telling the truth. It don't change. You thinking that you turned the truth? Don't 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 change nothing about it being a lie. You can lie whether you knew you lied or not. Don't get too offended. You still lie. Don't get offended. I ain't trying to hurt your feelings. You still lie. At the end of the day, we all gotta admit we lied. Let God be true. Nine verse what? This is verse one. This is Ezekiel chapter nine verse one. What does the book say? He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, mm -hmm. even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And behold, six men came from the way of the hinder gate, higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And one man among them was clothed with linen, Watch this. with a writer's inkhorn by his side. Mm. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Uh-oh. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, mm -hmm. whereupon he was to the threshold, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Look who, look, look who the mark got put on. He said, set a mark on everybody who cries, on who sighs, right? All the ones that's, that, you know, the sigh, you be like, Shh. everybody who's walking through the midst of the city and looking around, all this foolishness happening, and they sitting there like, oh, goodness gracious, right? And the ones that's sitting there crying like, oh, man, I can't believe what's happening. He said, all of them, put a mark on them. Let's see what else happened. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. He said, If you ain't got a mark on you, you kill him. And don't have pity on him. He said, Just kill him without mercy. That would have mean when he said pity. He said, Kill him without mercy. Everybody who don't got that mark. Guess who got that mark? The ones that were bothered by it. The ones that were white, the ones that didn't make themselves comfortable with all this sin. The ones that didn't make themselves comfortable with all this hypocrite. The ones that bother. I can't even be around that stuff. They got the mark. 
All the rest of them, everybody just trying to be cool, trying to play both sides of the fence. You know what I'm saying? Trying, well, you know, well, you know, everybody got their flaws. And it, that, you know them? Oh, yeah, your, your butt gets slaughtered just like the rest of the sinners. We have to set ourselves apart. We work so hard to be standing next to these people. We have to set ourselves apart. Because if we don't, when it comes down to the slaughter, we're going to get caught up in the mix. God forbid. We got to stand apart. And it's not difficult. Just tell the truth. Yeah, somebody ain't going to like you. Yeah, they're going to tell you, you know, they ain't going to come to your party. You know what I'm talking about? We as a, as a heart, you know what I'm saying? We as a heart. You know what I'm saying? I was a man. You know what I'm saying? We the men, you know what I'm saying? Around that time, right, be, right before it's a hard time, you know what I'm saying? We had it going on still. You know what I'm saying? But around that same time, guess what? Stop going out. Start preaching the word. Start telling my boys, you know, don't cuss around me like that, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to relax. All that stuff. Nah, man. Nah, you can't smoke no weed in my house. Can't drink in my house. I have my baby shower. Ain't none of my boys show up. You know what I'm talking about? Remember when we were playing that thing, baby? We were playing that thing. I was like, oh, man, we're going to have to get seats galore. You know what I'm saying? All my homies going to show up. Then all this going to show up. And this, that, and other. I look around, that thing cricket. Now, there's a lot of people came, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't as many people as I thought, because I thought, for sure, all my boys, they were kicking down them doors. That's all right. That's how, that ha that's how it happens. Because you know what they doing? They serving they God. They serving there. They be like, man, I ain't standing next to that foolishness. I ain't standing next to no godly man. That's crazy. They serving they God. Why we can't do the same? These people come to you. You know what they want? They want you to compromise every step of the way. It, I mean, Christmas is just a day, a celebration for family. Right? Just a day of celebration. Tell them about Purim. See if they show up. I mean, that's just a celebration for family that's actually in the Bible. See if they show up. They don't want nothing to do with that. They don't want nothing to do with no Passover. We'd be sitting here right by our darn cell, eating some good darn steak, some good darn uh, lamb. But that's about darn it. You know what I'm saying? Only reason the kids come because we got a darn jumper. <laughs> right? That's all right. Right? That's all right. That's, that's what comes with it. Right? You, when you separate it, that's exactly what it means. You separate it. Right? You by yourself. You know what they're going to do? They're going to say, don't cut yourself off from the rest of the world. No, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> it was premeditated. It's exactly what I'm trying to do. I do want to cut myself off from that the rest of the world. Easy. They ain't got to be easy. I, got, I constantly tell my wife, I don't want to go. I don't want to be bothered. I want to be left alone. <laughs> that's that easy. Like I said, my brother down to be happy about it, too. It's important that we look at, we look at, we don't, have to, we don't have to try to fight to stand next to these people and to be accepted by these people, right? That's not, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to be accepted by them. We just need to be accepted by the most high God. And it's not hard to be accepted by God. He already, he already gave us a game plan, right? Jump on back to Romans chapter 4. It's Romans chapter 4. Give me verse 5. Let's talk this through a little bit. You know what I'm talking about, Matty? Got to talk it through. Just got to figure out, figure out where we are. They got level set. You know what I'm talking about? They got to see where we are. What we going? What we got going on? You know what I'm saying? It's Tony book. But to him that work is not, uh -huh. but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Uh huh. So if you don't work, but you believe, then you give it. It's counted to you. That means it's credit, right? You credited righteousness, right? But if you credited righteousness, that means you got to pay something back. Randy, we were just talking about credit today, huh? What I explain to you? What I, what you remember? Nothing. What you remember? I told you you get a credit card. What you gonna need to do every month? And what they gonna and what they gonna do every month? What I call it? Mm. They're going to charge you interest every month, huh? What did I tell you? You said you were going to wait for what to get, to get uh, try to get a credit card? Secure account. No, you said what you going to wait for? The next time you got what? The next time I got paid. 
You're going to wait for that. I told you, why you going to do that? Didn't I tell you, get one? I said, go apply tonight, huh? Because I told you, what don't you need to get a credit card? You can be broke with a credit card. Ain't that what I told you? You can have a credit card right now. Have no darn money in your account or in your pocket or anything. You got a credit card, you can take that thing right to Walmart and swipe that thing. You swipe it. Let me tell you, you swipe it. You swipe that thing so darn quick. You stick that. Now they got the chips in you. You got it. So you stick that thing in the chip. Walk away. You step back like you the darn man. That thing gonna say approve so quick. You put it. Look, I kid you not. You put a debit card in there. That thing take a couple seconds to be approved. You put your credit card. Get that thing out the way. So good. Pull it out. That thing say it. Pull it out. You know what I'm saying? You pull that thing out. They be like approve. Take it and go. Cause they they want you. Listen, as soon as you do it, guess what you just did? Cha-ching. Cause now you owe they butt. As soon as you swipe that thing, you owe they butt. How you think God looking? God looking to you? Oh, you believe? All right, go ahead. Cha-ching. <laughs> that thing all mine now. You believe? It's a credit. It's, it's, it, that thing's accounted to you, righteousness. What do you think Abraham did? Abraham believed God in, in what is that, chapter 15? Uh, Genesis 15? No, the covenant. The covenant. Fifteen or seventeen. It is two covenants. Seventeen, seventeen, if I'm not mistaken. It's I think the second it's, time. Yeah, I think I think I, I think it's fifteen. Okay. Could be wrong. We ain't got to get it though. But um, it's Genesis. I think it was it was Genesis. I think fifteen. He said, he said, I believe you. God told him this was this how it's gonna play out. You are gonna get this. He said, I believe you. And God accounted it to him as righteousness. You think that was it for Abraham? Give me James. This is the part they ain't going to tell y'all Christians. I hope there's some Christians watching. This is the part they ain't going to tell you. They're not going to tell you this part in church. Let's make sure we tell them the truth. Let's give them the whole story. Let's teach the people about credit. People didn't know but the Bible talked about credit. They've been hiding credit from it. Our, our people don't teach us nothing about no darn credit. Right? People didn't tell you that the Bible would talk about credit. That's amazing we were just talking about credit today, huh? Y'all think God ain't paying attention. It's James chapter 2. What's the book talking about? James chapter 2, what I want? Verse 16? Give me uh, James chapter 2, verse 18. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. The man may say, you got faith. And I got works, right? We just got we just got done talking about it. If you believe God, it's gonna be counted to you as righteousness, right? That's credit. You believe God, that's credit, right? Come back on the other side, you work, God owe you something, right? Okay, let's see. Tease, what's up? Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. He says, show me your faith without your works, and I'm going to show you my faith by my works. This is, this is James talking. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Thou believest that there is one God thou does well. He said, you believe there's one God. Well, good for you. <laughs> right? Good for you. Right? Keep going. The devils also believe and tremble. He said there's a lot of people that believe that. And they still going to darn hell. Right? Keep going. But will thou know, O man, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Mm-hmm. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Look, he had offered Isaac? look what he said. Christians will go to what we just read in Romans. And they'll tell you, this is proof that what you do does not matter to God. What God is worried about is your heart. Not realizing, not realizing that what they just said was a contradiction. But whatever, we'll get into that later. Yeah, God, it don't matter what you do. God gonna love you the same. You can't do nothing. To, I love it when they say, you can't do nothing to make God love you any more or any less. Couldn't agree. I remember the first time they told me that thing, that thing warmed my darn heart so much. I think I went out and smoked some weed at the darn church. I said, you know what, now this is a deal. You mean tell me I can't do nothing? There, no, no. You mean tell, there is nothing I can do to make God love, love me more? You know what type of security blanket that is? God going to love 
everybody is saved, no matter what any of us do, oh, now that's a deal right there. That's a deal. You can't beat that. You cannot beat that. Let's see if James tells us anything different. Let's see. He said Abraham was justified by faith. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Mm. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? He said by what? Works, faith made perfect. By works, faith was made perfect. You know why? Because at that point, Abraham paid back. At the beginning, Most High God said, uh, I'll give it to you. I'll give righteousness to you. He said, I'll count it to you righteousness. Genesis 15. He said he accounted to him righteousness. Then Genesis 22, what did he say? Grab it for me. Let's look at it. It's Genesis chapter 22. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. All we need is somebody to teach us. All we need is somebody to open up this book to us. Teach us how to think and look at it ourselves. This is Genesis chapter 22. I don't want the whole thing. Give me, uh, what I want, verse 13? Yeah. This is Genesis chapter 22, verse 13. You want like after the sacrifice? Mm-hmm. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Uh-huh. And Abraham went and took the ram. Oh, no, that might, that might, I want where the angel talking. That might be at the angel, is it? Yeah. What I want, verse 9? When he's like, stay your hand. Uh-huh. <coughs> what is that, verse 9, verse 8? 11. 11? This is, Gen uh, this is Genesis chapter 22, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Uh-huh. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. Why? For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. He said, now I know. Guess what Abraham had to do? Credit it. He had to prove that thing out. God will give it to you on credit at first. At the first, you say, I believe. The most I got, he'll give it to you on credit. He'll be like, you know what? I be like, I believe you, God. We open up the book. I believe in Je I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. You know what the most high God do? All right. That's your credit card right there. He gave you that on credit. That's credit card. As soon as you get to swiping it. As soon as you swipe it, guess what you do? You owe God. So now you got to prove it out. You know what a credit card company, you know what they, the whole time what they're doing? Each time you, if you, each time you make a payment on your car. What did I tell you earlier when we were talking? You make a payment on your car, what happened? Where, where, what happened? Where does it go to, though? It goes to, like, the, the, the other credit company, and they just look at it, and he gives you a yes, or, or you pay it on time. Or you That's right, right? So every month, every month, when you pay the credit company, credit card company, they report that out. And they report your history. They say, you know what? He's good for it. Now, listen, when you apply for that credit card, they don't have the information that you're going you to really do it. Only thing they can do is, especially if you somebody you ain't got no credit, you never had a credit card, they giving it to you on good faith. They just giving it to you. You know what you said? You say you're going to pay us. That's the same thing most, most of our guys that you believe. He'd be like, all right, I credit to you righteousness. But then you got you to gotta live. You got to live that thing out, and then you got to prove it to the most high God. Then at the end of the day, if you prove that thing out, most of God would be looking at you, and he'd be like, stay your hand. Just stay your hand. That's all we're looking for. We're looking for the most I got to tell us, stay your hand. Just like he told Abraham, stay your hand. Now I know. Read that for me right now. Man, y'all ain't never had God walk up to you and tell you, now I know. We never had that. God has never come to any of us and looked at us and be like, now I know. Do y'all know what we dealing with here? Don't let these people try to sit here and tell us you can do whatever you want to do. You know that ain't God. You know, Dita, we sat in these churches and we know deep down that was never right for us. We all felt we all here because we all knew that was not right. 
That thing didn't feel right. We got to appreciate God for that. How my boy fall asleep like that? All these kids here, he ain't trying to have fun? Wake him up, TJ. Beat him up. Go get the boxing glove. Go beat him up. Go ahead. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Mm -hmm. He said, Now I know that you fear God. He's like, You play the game? Yeah. <laughs> He said, now I know that you fear God. Man, why, how good does that have to feel? Had a most high God come to you and be like, oh, don't even worry about it. Now I know you for real. At first he gave it to him on Christmas. I just want y'all to understand that concept, right? Paul's telling us, if it's grace, that thing coming by credit. That's what we operating on. And sometimes we'll look at that and we'll be like, see, God doesn't care what we, what we do. But look at the reality of what he's saying. He's saying, it's to you on credit. You believe, so I count it to you as righteousness. And it took chapters after chapters of Abraham's life that he come back and he'd be like, okay, now I know you for real. After all this time, you did exactly what I told you to do. But you was about to kill your son. Now I know you the real deal. And that's when the thing is sealed. That's when the Most High God is like, okay, for sure. If we keep reading, this is when he confirmed all the promises. If we go to chapter 26, then that's when after he, after, go to chapter 26. This is Genesis chapter 26, verse uh, 1. I just want y'all to see how the thing work out with God. Because y'all, you know, I mean, sometimes you kind of, you know, say stuff, play around. People say stuff to you. It don't really stick to you. I just want y'all to see exactly how God worked. Abraham alive. God told him after years and years and years. Now I know you for real. Because you're about to kill your son for me. Stay your hand. Don't kill your son. But now I know you for real. Right? That's the payback. Right? He paid, he, he been making his payments on time with his righteousness credit card. Right? He just been paying on time. His credit report, good. Most of God looking at it like, yeah, this, this one for real. Right? Now I know you trustworthy. Now I know you will do what I told you to do. Right? Now let's go to... Uh, Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. Watch this. Talking about Isaac. Mm hmm And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Uh-huh. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of, Phil king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Uh-huh. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell of thee. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries... And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. Which he swear unto who? Abraham your father. Guess what? Guess where Abraham is right now? He dead, ain't he? Dead. Abraham dead. But well, watch what the Most High God say about the dead man. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And why? Why is God gonna do that for Isaac? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He said, because Abraham did everything I asked him to do. It's no longer credit at that point. At that point, you made your payments on time. You make your payments on time, the most high God to mess with you. He'll give it to you on credit. Then after that, you make your payments on time and you don't default. Okay, let's just talk. Let's just talk. I just want to make sure we talk. You just bought a house. God forbid, let's just say you make your payments on time for 29 years. You got a 30-year loan? You make your payments on time for 29 years. Let's say in that 30th year, you just like, nah, we good. I just, I mean, let's just say you ain't got it, right? God forbid, right? And you ain't even got it. That 30th year, what they going to do? They going to be like, oh, now you made most of it. Go ahead and stay in the house. They're going to take that whole darn house from you. Make even devil. They're going to take the whole house from you. 30 years, I mean 29 years, you could be making payments on, on time. Never missed a payment. Let you miss three, four months of payments. Whole house gone. And it's as if you never paid a thing. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Just because, I mean, just because y'all think they ain't never taught us about credit. They've never taught us about credit. So now when we read the Bible, we don't even recognize that this is talking about credit. The whole time, the Most High God is talking about credit. 
But they never taught us about it, so we don't recognize it. This is Ezekiel 18. You just tell me if this seems familiar. Maybe I'm just pulling this stuff out of my butt. People don't teach no darn Bible, and we sit here and praise these people. Give all this money to these people, and they ain't taught us darn nothing. This is Ezekiel chapter 18. Let these people hear the truth. You're doing one of two things. You're either hiding it from the people or your butt don't darn know. Either way, you don't deserve to preach the word. This is Ezekiel chapter 18. Give me verse, I don't know, verse 9. What I want. Start anywhere. Yeah, the whole thing, but let me see. We'll, we'll do four. We'll start at four. This is Ezekiel chapter uh, 18, verse 4. What does the book say? Behold, all souls are mine. He said, All of them are mine. What else? As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is uh -huh. mine. Uh huh. The soul that sins, it shall die. Uh huh. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and has not eaten upon the mountains, neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. Uh huh. Neither has defiled his neighbor's wife. Uh huh. Neither has come near to a menstruous woman. Uh huh. And has not oppressed any, but has restored to the debtor his pledge. Uh huh. Has spoiled none by violence. Uh huh. Has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment. Uh huh. He that has not given forth upon usury, neither has taken any increase. That has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, uh -huh. has executed true judgment to, between man and man, has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments to deal truly. This he is the man who's making his payments on time. We is, can shorten all that up. The man who makes his righteousness payments on time. What else? He is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord God. You make your payments on time, you're going to surely live, say the Lord, Lord God. Watch this, though. If he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood... And that does the like to any one of these things, and that does not any of those duties, but even has eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, mm -hmm. has oppressed the poor and needy and spoiled by violence, mm -hmm. has not restored the pledge, has lifted up his eyes to the idols, has committed abomination, has given forth upon usury and has taken increase, shall, be, shall he then live? He shall not live. He has done all these abominations. He shall surely die. You don't make your payments on time. You're going to die. Watch this. Keep going, though. Now, look. If he beget a son uh -huh. and see all his father's sins, which he has done and considers and does not such like, uh -huh. that has not eaten upon the mountains, neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, uh -huh. has not defiled his neighbor's wife, uh -huh. neither has oppressed any, has not withholding the pledge, uh -huh. neither has spoiled by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment uh -huh. that has taken off his hand from the poor, that has not received usury nor increase, has executed my judgments, has walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. Mm -hmm. Keep going. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, uh -huh. lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Uh huh. Yet, so in other words, the person... Who does what they do, going to die. You make your payments on time, you good. You don't, you're going to die. But watch this. Yet they say what? Yet say ye why. Does not the son bear the iniquity of the father? Mm -hmm. When the son has done that which is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes, mm -hmm. and has done them, he shall surely live. Right. The souls that sin, it shall die. Uh-huh. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Right. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Watch the this. wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked is going to be upon him. Watch this. But if the wicked will turn from all his if sins. If the wicked does what? Turn from all his sins. So you started out wicked, right? And if you do what? Turn from all his sins. Okay. That he has committed. Uh-huh. And keep all my statutes. Uh-huh. And do that which is lawful and right. Uh-huh. He shall surely live. He shall not die. You know what happens if you got bad credit? You, you ain't going to be able to get nothing, right? But then, if you turn from your late payments, if you turn from, from, from missing payments altogether and defaulting on your loans, 
and you, you get you a nice secure card or something like that, and you start making good payments on time, after seven years, all that foolishness falls off, and guess what? He said, the wicked turn from his wicked ways. What's going to happen? He shall live. Most like God, like, no, that thing never happened. Keep going. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness. You know what happened? You make bad payments, bad payments, bad payments. I used to have a card. It was a Capital One card. I got that thing right at 18. You know what I did to that thing? Jacked him up. <laughs> He's out there. He's out there living. You know what? Crazy part is, had a pocket full of darn money. Pocket full of money. That you know what I said? Thing. Eh. Jacked him up. I, I used that thing, ran it all the way up to the limit. They never saw that darn money. Right? I ain't never saw an advertisement from Capital, Capital One again. But then, seven years went by. Thing cleaned up. Bought me a car. Made payments on time. Got me another credit card. Made payments on time. Guess what comes in the mail every other week now? Capital One. They say, hey, we have a credit card for you. I've been telling Tasha all the time, like, they don't know who they, they obviously don't know who they advertise to. They must have forgot who I am. It won't be mentioned. It won't be mentioned. They never taught us about credit. That's why when we look at the book, we don't see it and we don't understand it. They never taught us about credit. Watch that. Keep going. Have I any pleasure? Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says uh -huh. the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Uh huh. Watch this. But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness, when the righteous does what? Turns away from his righteousness. You mean when the righteous makes their payments on time for twenty nine years, and they got a thirty year mortgage, in that last year they turn from their on time payments. And they start making late payments. Then they start missing payments. What's going to happen? And commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does. Uh -huh. Shall he live? Shall he live? Shall he keep his house? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. All them good payments shall not be mentioned. Guess what that? They about to put a foreclosure sign in front of you. All in payment, all at 29 years of making payments on that house. House almost paid off. All that. Guess who owned that house? Same one who owned it the whole time. And guess what they're going to do to it? Sell it again. And make that same money back. Y'all think y'all playing. God ain't playing with y'all. God ain't playing with us. He's looking at us. He's looking like. I own this whole shebang. I own the I own the father and I own the son. All souls are mine. All souls are mine. I own the whole thing. Everything you got is off to you as credit. When you gonna start making your payments on time? You make them on time. I'll forget all them years that you've been sitting there because we know all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Every one of us got bad credit. Right? Isaiah tells we are but what? Dead. That too. But he said we are we are like what? Filthy rags. Filthy darn rags. All of our darn credit is bad. All of us walking around here with darn 490s. You know what I mean? 490 shouldn't even be mentioned. You know what I'm saying? You talking about a 490? Well, your, your butt might just kick, be kicked out of a government office. Four darn 90. Right? All of us walking around here with just terrible, filthy credit. Most like God said, you know what? I'll tell you what, I got this secure card for you, right? I got this credit program for you. You know what his name is? Yahushua, the Messiah, right? I'll tell you what, he'll pay off all your debt. All you got to do is make, y'all ever heard of them? So you, when y'all get into real debt, then God forbid, but if you get into some real debt, some, I mean, I'm talking about some real debt, like $50,000 worth of credit card debt and all that, you know what they got? They got the thing called debt consolidation. Right? And what this is, this is a company that comes along. Buy all your debt. They'll buy all of it. They'll, they'll call all the people that you owe. They'll cut deals with them. They'll be like, you know what, okay, he owe you 500000 Okay, it ain't going to be that much. But let's say he owe you $5,000. All right, I'll tell you what. We'll pay you right now, just, you know, slice it now. Right? $2,500. Okay, we'll pay you right now. Then you go to the other one. Okay, he owe you 2000 
All right, we'll give you uh, $750 right now. You call it even. Okay, okay, cool. And then go all to there. Go to everybody you owe. Cut deals with them. Some of them, they'll be able to cut deals they want. Right? They pay all that money. Right? And they pay it all for you. And then you know what they come to you and say? You just pay us. Right? We paid all that for you. Now you owe us. You didn't get off of nothing. But now all this does is bad stuff that's on your credit. They just cleaned it up because they just paid everything off for you. Right? All you got to do is play, pay one place now. You owe 50000 now you owe us twenty. Nah, they gonna they, they gonna charge you more, right? <laughs> they they only paid twenty, right? You had fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. They cut deals and they only paid twenty dollars, twenty thousand dollars, right? But they gonna charge you that whole fifty thousand dollars plus interest. That's crazy. They ain't gonna tell you that part. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna tell you. You know what I'm saying? Debt. Don't don't you mess with no debt consolidation scheme. You know what I'm saying? But that's what the company do. That's what y'all was shooting. He had debt consolidation scheme. You think he paid full price? How many times? Okay, okay. I mean, I just. Man, people don't like it. People don't like when you talk. God is a businessman. He's a, book call him what? Book call in the parable. They 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 said I knew you were a what? A hard man, a harsh man. And you do what where you don't what? You sow where you don't. You reap where you don't what? You reap where you don't sow. You know what that mean? They talk, this is a parable talking about God. We doing all the work and you getting the money. You know what that mean? He say I knew you. I know you a hard man. This is talking about God. I know you a hard man. And you reap where you don't sow. That means I'm taking where I didn't work to get it. This is God. They don't, oh, they don't teach y'all about God. That because they, they, they don't teach y'all about God. That's why all this stuff is foreign concepts. They never taught y'all about God. Let's learn about the real one. He said he's a hard man, and he he take in places that it wasn't even here. He didn't put no work in there. You know who working for him? Us. You think, so let's just, let's just lay it out, right? Jesus paid the debt, right? Good old Jesus, sweet Jesus, right? He paid the debt, didn't he? Yeah. What was the debt that he paid? Uh, death. Death. He paid for my death. Pay for your death? Pay for Chris' debt, too? What about Eli? Eli, you know, he probably ain't got to his yet. He paid for his, too. So he paid for all our debt. Let me see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just in this room. Is it eleven? Did I count that right? Eleven deaths. How many times he died? Once. He can't even cover this whole room. One death, and that cover everybody? I mean, this room got eleven. One death? You trying to tell me he didn't cut a deal? Technically, he would have had to die millions and millions of times. Billions. I don't know. Who knows how many people that came through here? All right? He would have to die millions and millions of times, technically, to pay for everybody's death. He died once. He went to God and he said, you know what, listen, I'll pay the debt. Let's cut a deal now. I ain't about to go through this a whole bunch of time now. One shot. But guess what he charged us? The whole shebang. We got to give him everything we got. That's a debt consolidation scheme. That's the company. It's real companies that do it. You can call them right now. They come on TV. You'll see them. They see him. Do you owe more than seventy uh, seven seven thousand worth of debt? They come on. They're there. Do you owe? You know it's a debt consolidation because they want big money. They're not. They're not about to come to you. Oh, you got a two hundred two hundred dollar uh, two two thousand uh, dollar credit card debt. They not talking. I don't care nothing about that. You can pay that off your darn self. I want seven. I want ten thousand dollars. You got ten thousand dollars. You owe the IRS. That's what they love it when you owe the IRS. You owe the IRS, right? We'll pay them. They get that money. They cut a deal with the IRS. They cut a deal with your credit card company. They cut a deal. Get it lower, and they're gonna charge you the whole whop. And you have to pay them with interest. And as long as you pay on time, you good money. All right? That's what y'all wish you would did for us, right? But if at any point you turn back from making your payments, you are as good as a wicked person to him. That's it. Paul said you was bought with a price. You were defaulted. All of this stuff is on credit. You owe God for every single thing that he's ever given you. God don't owe you. If it's of works, then you owe. 
when you clock in to work and you do work and then you clock out, your job owes you. That's not no credit. Your job owes you. Come Friday, money better be on darn time. They don't have your check on Friday. What you doing? Tripping out. You tripping darn out. Your check darn short. Oh, they got you messed up. You going right down to HR. Right? Play with my darn money? Why? Because you owe me this. I did the work already. That's not us. We got to work to pay back. All right? That's why Abraham, it was credited to him righteousness. All right? Then he goes. And in chapter 22, most of our God said, mm, stay your hand. Now I know. All right? Now I know you the man. Now I know you, my man. You know what I'm saying? Then he died. Most of our God told his son, he was like, man, your daddy did everything I told him to do. Man, how good did I feel? You know you had a daddy that did everything that God told him to do. We can be that for our kids. All we got to do is stop playing with the man. See here, learn the book. Take it serious. Get all this stuff out of our minds. Get all this stuff out of our life. Stop trying to, you know what I'm saying, be buddy-buddy with everybody. These people going to hell. You know what I'm saying? You understand? When you, if, if the most high God come and get them and we standing next to them, where do you think we going? We don't have no big, these people are going to hell. Like, there's no way around it. We don't need to be accepted by them. They're not going to accept us. And that's fine. We got somewhere we need to be. We got the truth on our side. Where we is at, Romans? No, we is in James, wasn't we? Where we leave off in James? What verse? James 3? No, it's James chapter 2, but... Uh, Genesis before, then we was in James, then we was in Romans, then we was in Ezekiel. Give me, give me James chapter 2. What verse we live off in James? 22. Give me James chapter 2, verse 22. I just want to get that next verse, 22 and 23. Seest thou how faith wrought his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Mm -hmm. Faith wrought with his works. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him righteousness. You see that? It was fulfilled. Right? And he was called the friend of God. It started off as credit. Genesis chapter 15, he said it was accounted to him righteousness. Same thing Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 4. Started off as credit. But he said it was fulfilled after he actually obeyed God and made his payments on time. He is on time with his righteousness. After the Most High God said, you know what? I'll give it to you on credit. After that, he is on time with his righteousness. And the Most High God said, you know what? Now I know. All right? Grab Genesis chapter 14 for me. Let me get up out of here. It's Genesis chapter 14. Give me verse 21. Genesis chapter 14, verse 21. Don't let these people think that, you know what I'm saying, ain't no works involved in what we do. You know what I'm saying? There's two ways this thing can play out. You can work and think that God owe you, or you can work and know that you owe God. But either way, if you want to get in, your boy going to do some work. Man, all they talk about is, this is my season. Oh, yeah. My blessing coming. It's all about my. I'm going to get my My season. The chain's going to break. My breakthrough. You know what I'm saying? It's my breakthrough. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying?
man, my blessing is coming. I can feel it and all that stuff. I deserve this. My, 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 my. Right? My, 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 my. You're going to be feeling a whole lot of stuff. You know what you got to feel, though? You got to feel the most high God. That's it. You got to feel, you got to feel, you got to be, you got to be thinking about most high God. How can I, how can I further your kingdom? All right? What can I do for you? I'm an unprofitable servant. All right? There ain't nothing I done did that can add anything to what you're doing. I'm an unprofitable. After I get done doing everything you told me to do, guess what? I'm an unprofitable servant. That got to be our mindset. Our mindset can't be my, 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 my blessing, my change, my li That stuff that ain't book. You ain't going to find that in the book. That's this Christian stuff that they didn't taught us. Right? The denominational stuff they didn't taught us. Right? Teach people the truth. Right? Get out there and you serve the most high God. You serve the most high God. He told you he'll give you whatever you want. Whatever you want. According to his will. Right? But we got to serve the man. We can't sit here and play. We can't sit here and just play patty cake and then think something that he going to move for us. He moving according to his will. We just got to be aligned to that thing. Go ahead. This is uh, Genesis chapter 14, verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Mm -hmm. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is yours. Lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich. Look how, look how Abram, look, look, look how Abraham was looking. Abraham, his whole mindset was, I ain't about to take nothing from you just because you're gonna be able to be associated with me through that, right? You're gonna be able to take glory for what, 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 uh, what I got going on here. He said, Nah, I don't want none of it. Then watch what turn around and happen. Watch. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me. Aner, Eskol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. All right? He said, let the boys take what they want. He said, I don't want none of it, though. All right? Keep going. Uh, chapter 15. That's I, chapter 15. We yeah. good. Wait, that's chapter 15? You're going into 15, huh? That was the last verse. What verse you start at? 14. What was the last verse of 14? Oh, my bad. No, I started at 19. What was I thinking? Yeah, it started off at 14 for me. No, I started at 21. You said 21. Oh, give me 14 then. Okay. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed and trained serv his trained servants, born in his house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Uh-huh. And he divided himself against them and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And he brought back all the goods. Excuse me. And he brought back all the goods, also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Mm -hmm. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after he returned from the slaughter of Kedolomer mm -hmm. and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shiva, which is in the king's date, Dale. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought, his, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram, the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. Uh -huh. And he gave him tithes of all. He gave them what? Tithes of all. Right? So you can see Abraham, he gave away his stuff. And then when they was offering him stuff to take, we read it out of order. But when they was offering him stuff to take, he was looking like, no, nah, I don't want nothing yet. But he gave everything he got to God. That be our. I gotta be our mindset. I don't want to be attached to none of these people, but at the same time, thing at the same time, I give a tenth to everything I got to the Most High God. That's where Ty started, right there, right? And that's Old Testament. You let the Christian tell you Old Testament is what? Done away with. Old Testament done away with. No, nah, brother. See, you know what I'm saying. You can eat pork because that was just that was just the Old Testament. See, Jesus said all things are clean now, right? That's all right. I'm over it, but, all right? Yeah, Jesus, Jesus say all things are clean now. All right? Get down, boy. Turn around. All right? We look at it, but, guess, but guess, what, guess what made its way all the way over to the New Testament, but not for real? Tithe it. They're going to tithe the mess out of your butt in the Christian church. Yeah. 
You lost your darn mind going in there without no money. What's wrong with you? You go to a black Christian church, they mess around tie your butt three, four times before you get up out of there. How you name your tie? I mean, it's the tabernacle tithe here. And it's the pastoral tithe. And, uh, you know, you got all these different tithes. Like, oh, man. They had light your butt up with them tithes. I don't know how that made it to the New Testament. You know what they're going to tell you? Uh, they grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy chapter 14. Let's look at a real tithe. We'll get up out of here real quick. This is Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Give me verse 21. I think that's where I wanted 21. I probably did say 21. That's where I wanted 21. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21. <sighs> hmm? A what? A What's up? That Spanish or something? Oh, you said he looked like a who? You better leave my boy alone. He a Hebrew, 100%. <laughs> this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21. You shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. Uh huh. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. Uh huh. This is our God. This is the Old Testament God. He said, "Give it to the stranger, so he can eat it." The Gentile. He said, "Give it to the Gentile." Don't let the people tell you all this weird stuff. Right? He said, "Listen, y'all can't eat it. It die of itself. Y'all can't eat it. But make sure the Gentile can eat it." Right? Go ahead and give it to the Gentile. They can eat that stuff. Keep going. For thou mayest sell it unto an alien. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. You're going to tithe all the increase of your seed. That the field brings forth year by year. Uh huh. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. When? To place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and thine oil. When? And the first things of thy herd and thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to feel, fear the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. Always. Yeah, buddy. And if the way be too long for thee, so that they are not able to carry it. Uh -huh. Or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. Uh -huh. When the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in the tithe hand, and shall go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lustest after, for oxen or for sheep, or for wine or for strong drink, or whatsoever thy shall desire. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he has no part nor inheritance with thee. All right? So that's the real tie. Right? It was made for the strangers and it was made for the Levite that was within our gates. Alright? That's the real tie. But, you know, they're going to take... Go to, go to Malachi. We'll get out of here after Malachi. Go to Malachi Malachi chapter 3. I just got to show y'all how they use... You know, so you, you've, been, you've been in one of these churches. I'm pretty sure you heard Malachi chapter 3. It's Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. All this Old Testament, by the way. We ain't even touched the New Testament yet. Not about no ties. All this Old Testament, the, the done away Old Testament. But I bet you they're going to light your butt up with Ty and tell you Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin and the Old Testament is done away with. Will a man rob God? Uh-oh. Yet ye have robbed me. Uh-oh, how we rob you, God? But you say, wherein have we robbed you? Mm-hmm. In tithes and offerings. Mm, tithes and offerings. We rob God. Right? That's the one that the pastor light our butts up with. He's looking at us and you rob God. You don't believe me? Right? You don't get tired today, guess what you're doing? You robbing God. You don't believe me? Let's read it. Then he read it to us. We were sitting there, ooh, that's what it say though. They sure know how to use the Bible when they, you know what I'm saying, come to what they need. You know what I'm saying? They say he robbed God. They ain't going to tell you that's the Old Testament. You should ask their pastor, what temple, what Levite is this going to? They ain't gonna tell you. They ain't gonna tell you how the tithe actually works. They ain't gonna tell you what the tithe actually is, who it applied to, what it was for. You know what they gonna tell you to go for? The fund for the building. All right? 
These people, stay darn building. See, they're built for 20 darn years, increasing and, and better in the church, a building. People hungry. People sick. People tired. Now, I ain't going to tell that lie now. Some of them even take care of their people. I ain't going to tell that lie and try to act like none of these churches are taking care of their people. Some of them take care of their people. Some of them loan the people money. Some of them, some of them really take good care of the people. I don't care if you're taking care of all the people. All right? You still a hypocrite. You still a hypocrite. Teach the people exactly what the tithe is. Teach them where it came from. And don't if you're going to use the tithe, don't tell them that the Old Testament done away. Even if you use, I don't think it's wrong for a pastor to use the order of a tithe. I don't think it, a pastor can say, you know what, this is not the actual tithe. But in the same way that the tithe was used for the Levites, we're going to use it to structure God's house here. Right? Let's say, let's say we in the church of God. Let's say we in the, the congregation of God. We're going to use the tithe in the same way the congregation uses to support the Levites to structure our house here. I can accept that. I'm taking the order of the tithe. I'm applying it in a different way, but this is not the actual tithe. And I'm respecting the Old Testament. I'm respecting the order. I'm taking wisdom from the Old Testament. But what I'm not going to accept is for you to tell me Old Testament done away with until you can make money off of it. Then all of a sudden you take this Old Testament theme and then you rocking with it. There's a whole lot of themes in the Old Testament you can take and rock with it. Let's tell the people the truth. Let's teach people all of it. Because if you teach the people, then they understand it. Teach the people credit. They might understand the, the Bible better. Then they might, you know what I'm saying, be able to handle their credit. All right? We just haven't been educated. We haven't been taught how to value things. Ain't nobody taught me about no credit. Nobody taught me about no darn credit. I ain't learned about it until I tried to buy a house. Nobody taught me about credit. I learned that thing the hard way. Yeah. Then I got a job. You know what I'm saying? That's the only that's the thing that really taught me. You know what I'm saying? I got a job like, oh, that's how this works. It ain't really ain't even all that hard. No, man. It really ain't even all that hard. Simple stuff. Super simple. I thought credit. I thought credit. I was like, okay, if I pay my light bill on time, I ain't think about no darn light bill. I was sitting there paying my light bill on time. If you can be late on time, you can be late on your darn light bill. Light they put up. <laughs> they don't be tripping up. Hell, you know what I'm saying? They ain't gang. You, know, like, you they gotta be like two months behind for them to shut that thing up. You know what I'm saying? You sit there and you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'll pay y'all later. Yeah. You make sure that credit card paid, though. Make sure that car paid. Make sure your, your house note, that thing gotta be paid. All that gotta be paid. You know what I'm saying? You let the other stuff slip. Something gotta slip. You let your gas, your water, your light. Let the, all that slip. If something has to slip, you let that stuff slip first. You make sure everything that's going to hit your credit, you know what I'm saying? You make sure you take care of that first. You know what I'm saying? And once you get into that position on some credit, especially if it's a credit card, you go ahead and chop that thing up, chalk it up to the game. Don't worry about it. When you get in a better place, you can order a new card. You know what I'm saying? You just, but the one you got, you just chop that thing up. Just go ahead and chalk it up. To, don't close it. Keep it open. Keep making your payment. But if you know you can't handle it, You'll keep spending on that thing. You go ahead and chop that thing up. Drive it to the game. Don't you order another one until you're back in a good spot. You get back in a good spot, you call them up. Hey, I lost my car. They say, hey, happily send you another one. You know what I'm saying? I lost my car. I don't know where it is. They might charge, depending on the company, they might charge you a couple bucks. You know what I'm saying? Send you another one because you lost it and it's your fault. That's all right. Pay that couple bucks. Just make sure, you, make sure you're in a good spot. Don't keep putting yourself in the hole over no credit, though. You don't want, you don't want your credit to start coming over your bills long term. One month or two, you know what I'm saying, things slipping, you can't take care of everything, go ahead and pay the credit, make sure your credit stay good, then pay all your, the rest of your bills. You know what I'm saying? But you don't want that thing to be continuous. It'll be continuous, you keep on using that credit card. Don't worry, Maddie. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I know you, it's, about, it's almost time. Right? It's almost time for you to get out there. Don't worry, I'm putting, I'm, I'm, I'm putting something together for you um, and for the, uh, what's her name? Your cousin's name? For Aaron and... Uh, and uh, Alicia and Alexa, you know what I'm saying? All them, they just graduated too. So you know, you got, you got all of them graduated. All of them graduated. Yeah, was, yeah. So they, you know what I'm saying? You got all of them. You know what I'm saying? Life start hitting. All right, life start hitting. So you got, you got to start preparing yourself. You in the best place because you early enough to actually prepare, right? And start kind of planning stuff out and start looking at it. You figure out, do I want to pay for college? No. Do I want to go to college? No. Okay, what am I going to do else? And what else am I going to do? Right? You got to start thinking about that stuff. All that stuff, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tie back. We poor, right? We are poor people. 
right? So we, it's not like it's not like we gonna have some money coming from somewhere to make that thing happen. A whole bunch of options. Right? Yeah. So we gonna have to. Chances are, whatever we do, it's gonna come down to credit. So you gotta know how to use that thing. Don't worry, I'm gonna put something together. Make sure we all understand what we're doing. That way, y'all have a, you know, just have a little bit. Each generation, mama, mama learned something from mother, and she gave us a little bit more. And mother learned something from her mama. And just gave us, gave mama a little bit more. So each generation, that's what we got to do. We got to take a little bit more, keep adding on to it. That's the same thing we're doing with the Bible. All right? Your grandma, she taught me the Bible. All right? Your, 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 uh, your, your grandpa. All right? He exemplified it. He ain't really, I, I can't say he really sat down and taught me the Bible. He, he exemplified it. But she, she fed it. She fed me into the Bible. All right? So now what I got to do is I got to kind of look into it, look at the word, and then I add more onto it based off of what the most high God gave on me. Right? Any correction, anything that needs to be done, the most high God reveal it. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep on doing that. That's a book call. We gotta pass that down. All right? Any questions? TJ? All right, let's pray out. <laughs>